Hi, hello, welcome and welcome back to another episode on Little Slaw YouTube channel. Today I welcome you all to the second episode of Visual VM Profiler. So in our previous video we saw about the introduction to Visual VM and we saw an example of how to explore the various part of an application using the Visual VM Profiler and today in this video we are going to see about how to find the values or how to make use of the heap dump as part of the profiling so this episode actually has come up come out of a question where what will you do if you do not have option to use your monitoring tools to uh, understand the performance testing of your application so in this video we will see how to explore or what are all the options or what are all the values that we're going to extract out of a heap dump Okay, so I welcome you all again to this video. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet. And let's move on to the video. So before we move on to the heap dump, like how to browse the heap dump, let me give you a quick introduction of what is a heap dump or why do we need to explore the heap dump. So exploring the heap dump of an application can provide us valuable insight into it, memory usage, and it also helps us to identify and address performance issues. And that's why we are here. So as a performance tester or a performance engineer, we have to understand the heap dump, which actually plays a crucial for optimizing the application's memory management. So that's why we are looking into the heap dump because it, it plays a crucial role in the application's memory management. So the first part of it is the memory leaks. So this heap dumps will, will help us to identify the objects that are not being released properly and also help us to look for instances that should have been garbage collected but are still in the memory and it also help us to analyze the references to find out why objects are being retained so these three parts as part of the memory leaks can be identified using the heap dump the second part is the object retention so we can understand which objects are taking up the most memory so that's the first part when it comes to object retention and the second part is to identify objects that have a long lifespan and investigate whether they can be optimized or released earlier so that's the second part in terms of the object retention and the third part is the garbage collection activity which we all, which we all know the gc part so this heap dump will help us to analyze the frequency and duration of garbage collection cycles and the second part is it helps to evaluate the impact of garbage collection on application performance and the fourth part is the memory consumption patterns so using this heap dump we can examine how memory consumption evolves over time and it also identify patterns or trends in memory usage during different phases of the application and then the class loading and unloading so here you in fact i can show you the class part so can check for unnecessary class loading or unloading which impacts the performance and we can also analyze the class loader hierarchy and then the next part is the analyzing of threads so we can examine the threads and their memory allocations we can also identify for any potential thread contention or excessive thread creation and then when it comes to the heap structure we can understand the distribution of objects in the heap can also identify memory hotspots and areas with high object density and then when it comes to memory again we are dealing with the memory efficiency so we are or we have to evaluate the efficiency of memory usage and we have to identify the opportunities for optimization and we have to look for redundant or duplicate objects and next when it comes to the heap histogram so we have to generate a heap histogram to get a detailed breakdown of object types and their instance counts we also have to use this information to identify memory consuming areas in the application and for this we are using the profiling tool so we have to leverage the profiling tools to analyze the heap dumps more effectively so we have a lot of tools again in the market like the visual vm which we are discussing now will provide detailed visualization and insights so that's what we're going to see now and we can create multiple dumps and we can compare them so by comparing the heap dumps which are taken at different points so we run multiple tests and we compare them 
to identify the memory growth patterns or issues. So by thoroughly exploring the heap dump, we can pinpoint the memory related bottlenecks. We can optimize the memory usage and ultimately we can enhance the overall performance and stability of the application. And it's essential to combine the heap dump analysis with other performance testing techniques to comprehensively evaluate the application's performance. So now we have a heap dump here. So here today with us, and this was actually created when we were uh, running the Apache JMeter application in the background and then we have created this heap dump. So in case if you do not watch that video, please go, go to my previous video and you can check out how did I pre created this heap dump. So now with no further ado, let's go to the heap dump. So I've opened the heap dump here and this here, it shows us the contents of the heap dump. So the first part here, is the heap so it shows us how much size the heap size it so it shows us how many classes we have in the heap and how many instances did ran during this test and how many class loaders and we have how many gc routes and when it comes to the environment we have got which system the architecture of the system we have run and then the java home where we have actually the home of this java that's been installed and we have got all the information about the Java application and then when it comes to the JVM arguments so we have got JVM arguments we have got enabled modules the system properties so let's go through them one by one so first let's move on to the JVM arguments so we have a show button here so when I click on the show button here you can see we have got multiple JVM arguments here so before we move on to the JVM arguments Let's see what is this size, the classes, the instances, the class loaders, GC roots, everything talk about because that's very important. We do, we do not want to move without knowing what exactly does this talk about. So here it shows the size with a big number and then at the end bytes. So this indicates the total size of the heap in bytes. So in this case, the heap size is 35, 111 448 bytes which is approximately 33.5 megabytes 33.5 mb and then the classes so this classes represents the number of distinct classes which are loaded in the application so in java each class corresponds to a byte or blueprint for creating objects and then when it comes to the instances this indicates the total number of object instances in the heap. So this number represents the number of objects created during the application's execution. So again, I'm telling, so these instances number, so these represents the number of objects that are created during the application's execution. And then when it comes to the class loaders, it shows the number of class loaders used in the applications because this class loaders are responsible for loading classes into the JVM, which is the Java virtual machine. So they are very critical and they're very important to load the classes into the JVM. And then the GC routes, we have around 6,121. So this refers to the number of objects that are considered as garbage collection routes. So these garbage collection routes are objects that are directly accessible by running threads and are used as a starting point for the garbage collection process. And next we have the object spending for finalization, which is zero. So this indicates the number of objects that are pending finalization. So finalization is nothing but a process in Java where objects can perform cleanup operations before they are garbage collected. So in this case, there are no objects pending finalization because the count is zero. So let me tell you whether this is good or bad because we have to tell, right? We have to tell the customers that we have got a number. We have to tell whether that's good or bad. So now we will see whether it's good or bad and how to find whether it's good or bad. So the heap size alone does not indicate any issues. It is important to compare. Again, I'm saying it's very important to compare the heap size with the application's requirement and the available system resources. So for that, we have to understand what is the application requirement and then we have to understand what is the available system resources. So without these information, we cannot say that whether this number is good or bad. And if the heap size is consistently reaching its maximum limit, it might suggest a need for adjustment. So hope you understand. So this part, the size, the heap size is very important. So we have to tune it. But for that, we need to know two things. One is the applications requirement and the second part is the available system resources. And the next thing which we have, which we see here is the classes, which is around 10,369. 
So the number of classes loaded may vary based on the complexity of the application. A very high number of classes might suggest a large and complex code base. However, it does not necessarily indicate an issue unless it leads to excessive memory consumption or slow class loading times. And next is the instances, which is around 4,11,469. So the total number of instances does not indicate issues by itself. It's crucial to understand the distribution of instances and whether certain types of objects are dominating the memory. High object counts might be normal for certain applications. So don't need to worry that the instance counts is high, but still you have to do a comparison and you have to check whether the instance count go high or stay stable or it does come down. And next part is the class loader. So here we can see the number of class loaders can indicate how dynamic the class loading behavior is because too many class loaders might suggest a complex or inefficient class loading strategy. However, the absolute number alone does not determine if there is an issue. And then finally, the GC routes, which is around 6,121. So the number of GC routes provides information about objects that are directly accessible by running threads because in Java, threads are the major part. And this is normal and necessary for the garbage collection process. However, a large number of GC routes may indicate a long lived or widely referenced object that prevents other objects from being garbage collected. And then finally, the zero part, which is the object spending for finalization. So the absence of objects pending finalization is generally a good sign. So we have got one point, so this is a good sign. However, if there were objects frequently pending finalization, it might be a concern as it could lead to delays in memory reclamation. So we have to be very careful with this part. So since I told you the absence of objects which are pending Finalization is generally a good sign, the absence, which means the zero part. However, if there are objects frequently pending finalization, it might be a concern as it could be delays in memory reclamation because memory is the part which, which is why we are exploring or we are excavating the heap dump. So again, that is very critical to understand and that's very critical to, it's very important to understand. So with that, we come to an end. I don't want to bore you with a lot of stuff in this video. We will see about the other stuff, the JVM arguments, the enabled modules, what exactly are they? And because I've got a lot of information for about these and then about the system properties. And then we will also explore about the class number of instances. We have got a lot of information to discuss. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel for our next video. So until then, I meet you with another information, informative and interesting video. Until then, it's bye-bye from Asin Shanmugam and Little Slaw.